Are you sitting down right now? Then try this. Don't think about it. Just put your feet flat on the floor in a comfortable position. Now look down. What do you see? If you're like most people, your feet are gonna be about a 45 degree angle apart from each other. But if you look at a lot of drum kits, the pedals don't reflect that. Today we're gonna to talk about some ways to upgrade your pedal placement. We're gonna talk about some common roadblocks that once you remove them can help you to play faster, easier, and more confidently. You're also gonna look like a pro. So let's get started. All right, today I'm gonna to demonstrate with a conventional right-handed setup, but all of the concepts can really apply to any setup that you're playing. Let's start with where you sit. Your seat, commonly called a drum throne, is literally the foundation of your playing, so it's important to get it right. The next time you set up your drum kit, just try this. Start with just the throne. Set it wherever you want it, and then just sit down. If you put your feet flat on the floor, sit up tall and straight, relax your shoulders, you should be in a pretty natural position. Now look down at your feet. And again, like I said before, most people's feet are gonna be at about a 45 degree angle from each other. Also, your ankles will probably be right exactly under your knees or even slightly in front of them. All right, are you feeling good? Cool, remember that. We wanna remember that natural relationship between your knees and your ankles for later. Okay, now it's time to add the snare drum. In another video, I talked about the height and angle you want for your snare drum stand, so we're not gonna to touch on that now. For now, just grab that snare drum and set it down between your knees. For the purposes of pedal placement, I like to imagine a line that splits that snare drum exactly in half and comes straight out from my body. So the snare drum becomes the center point of my drum kit placement. I place the snare drum so that it almost touches my knees. You definitely don't want it to get in the way of any movement that your legs are gonna do, but you also don't wanna leave too much room there. Next, just put your pedals exactly where your feet naturally lie. If you play a double kick pedal, we're gonna talk about that in just a second, so hang tight. Go ahead and line the footboard of the pedal up exactly with that natural angle of your feet. A great place to start is just to take the widest part of the pedal and line that up with the ball of your foot. For me, I really like my toes back from the chain, uh, about an inch, inch and a half, that's usually my starting point. But I will admit, if you look at my pedal setup right now, my hi-hat pedal is gonna be just a little bit closer to the throne than my kick pedal is, because I play a little bit further out on my hi-hat pedal, especially when I'm playing jazz. It's a ton of heel up, independent footnotes. So that's where I like my pedal. Okay, so you're sitting on your throne, you've got your snare drum between your knees, and you've got your feet on the pedal. Right now, just go ahead and check that your ankles are still either under your knees or just slightly in front. The next step is just to make sure that your throne is at the right height. And so you wanna adjust so that with your feet in playing position on the pedals, your hips are gonna be just slightly higher than your knees. You want that upper leg or the thigh to angle slightly down toward your knees. If that feels a little too high for you, I might go so far as to play just exactly flat, but I definitely wouldn't sit so that my hips are lower than my knees. This should result in more speed, power, and endurance. Okay, for you double kick players out there, here's where we add the second pedal. Essentially what you're gonna do is just place it where I described putting the hi-hat pedal earlier, with both feet flat on the floor, with your knees almost touching the snare drum. Just go ahead and put that second kick pedal under your left foot. Then the hi-hat pedal just goes right next to that kick pedal as close as it can, matching the angle and the distance away from the throne. Once you've got all three pedals in place, again, just double check that you're able to keep your ankles under your knees or slightly in front of them, and make sure that your knees are still as close to that snare drum as they can comfortably be while playing both pedals. Okay, so these are my steps, but how did I come up with them and why do I set up my kit this way and why do I teach beginners to set up their kit this way? I was taught by some really great players and I've watched and studied some of the greatest players who've ever lived. And a lot of them are using these concepts in their kit setup. And the biggest reason for me is it just works. Beyond all that, there's really some pretty straightforward logic as to why you'd wanna set up your pedals in this way. And it goes back to what we very first talked about and that's your foot angle and that center line of the snare drum. Continuing with the traditional right-handed five piece setup, if you've got that snare drum between your knees and you just take a look at the entire kit, it doesn't look very balanced, does it? I just wanna draw attention to the fact that with the center line down the middle of the snare drum, the further you move your left foot out from the drum, or even if you rotate the angle out left, you're just pulling that center line over more and more to the left, and so things on the right-hand side of the kit become even more inaccessible. I know that ultimately, all of our drum setups are gonna break some of these rules at least a little bit, 
But the concepts are solid. They're worth thinking about and considering, and they're a really great place to start. So hit me up in the comments. I'd love to hear how your quest for the perfect setup is going, or if you've solved a problem in a unique way, or even if you just wanna share a frustration or ask a question. I've found in my YouTube journey that the community of drummers that's watching these videos is awesome. There will always be somebody who responds to you, offers a solution, or even has a snarky comment, and that's always fun. If you've made it this far, please click like, and if you haven't already, I hope that you'll consider subscribing to my channel. As always, thanks for watching. I really hope that any of these ideas will help you get closer to the setup that's right for you. We'll see you in the next one. When I talk about getting something right, sincerely I mean right for you. What I talk about in my videos works. I know that it does because I've used it on my own kit for years and with hundreds of students. But I realize that every player is different. With your own experience and experimentation, you might come up with something that is totally different from what I'm talking about and that is totally cool. As long as you're achieving your musical and drumming goals, that's awesome. You do you. All of my videos are my attempt to give some guidance to those who might be struggling with getting their kit right or having a specific problem or who might just have never even thought about what we're talking about. It's just a starting point, nothing more. And I really sincerely hope it helps.